went native on the chief, huh? Those ballerina antics were reckless. Should have just punched him in the throat again. Rome, you did the right thing with Measurehead. The ballerina antics won you the fight. Let's talk about our right to work. Now that you've acquired some stimulants, it's time for a little pick-me-up. Time to detect. It'll make you into more than that. A mega cop. This is your modus operandi. This is how you've done it for years. Let's go. See? That's your problem. A lack of confidence. Speed can help you with that. It can help you with everything it's not ideal no but you need the zeal let's face it you're never going to finish this case without cheating you raise the bottle close a nostril and inhale furiously the rush is almost immediate it tastes bitter and caustic and stings a bit inside your nose now the taste is slowly receding into your throat. The rush is growing in intensity. Your little heart pounding like a bird in a cage. A sweat breaks out across your brow. Your jaw clenches. And, let's be honest, there's a little chest pain. The good kind, of course. You may want to blast a nose of fed or something. Hmm, you could work with this high. Like, literally, work. Solve the case. File some papers, maybe clean up your hostel room, then solve another case, then start a side investigation into the paranatural, then build a radio computer. Whoa, this shit is strong. This shit is disco. To this? You kidding? There are downsides to not being on it. There are massive downsides. It's a potent neurotoxin. You're turning yourself into a frayed idiot. Spring, spring. Everything is clear around you. You're ready to concentrate on the next task in the task chain. In the bottom right corner of the screen, there's a speed button. Speed gives plus one to motoric skills. Perception, reaction speed, hand-eye coordination, savoir-faire, interfacing, and composure. This is good before a white check, but damages your morale. You keep coming back! That's good, officer! Keep browsing those clothes, keep saving that... Coming back! That's good, officer! Keep browsing those clothes, keep saving that economy! Something cold grazes your hand. 
Synthetic and sleek, a windbreaker. Surf, it says, but also wind, summer, 100% waterproof, and sport. All in different typefaces. Good choice, officer. Mega sporty. And it's only 450 for you, sir. Everything's still cool here, officer. Everything's still cool here, officer. No need to dress this one up. Just tell him what you want. Oh, okay. But why, officer? Ah, yes. You see, I'm an honest entrepreneur. I can't help you if you don't give me a good reason as to why I should. Everything's still cool here, officer. Start with a little compliment, then work your way up from there. This is about business, remember. Oh, okay. But why, officer? An investment? What kind of investment? Ha! That! You drive a hard bargain, officer. I respect that. Okay. What's it going to cost me? B Sounds like a fair deal all around. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map. Several the maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map. You peek at the stalky. Waiting for her to be distracted. When she's not looking, you deftly rip the map off the bulletin board and pocket it. You're now the proud owner of a map of Martinez, which, to be honest, did not even cost that much. I like playing in the dark. Sharpens your nocturnal instincts. Feels like being on recon again. As Rene turns from you to his partner and back, the medals on his chest rattle and glare. He keeps his spine straight and his ribcage lifted. 
displaying them proudly. Two, the larger one is shaped like a cross, while the smaller medal resembles the sun. A crowned head in front of two crossed rifles, the medal hangs from a blue striped triangle. It's the Croix de Bravour, Cross of Valor. The cross was the highest battlefield decoration in Suzerain's armed forces, awarded for exceptional bravery in the line of duty, in service of King Frissel I. A small blue star inside an orange sun, it has the word Valiance written below. The setting sun was a decoration used to distinguish seasoned combat veterans in service of King Frissel I during the revolution. For bravery. It's a conflicted topic for the old veteran. There must have been a number of controversial episodes in his service days. No. We were the last ones to keep all the baby killers and rapists in check. And let me tell you, son, if there hadn't been royal carabineers, Revelshul might not be standing at all. Whoa. Sounds like you're about to open the gates of conversation. This man will literally talk your ear off if you let him wander off to memory lane. For doing my duty in the heat of battle, for looking my mortality in the eye, when men like Gaston here hid in the bushes and shat themselves. He saved some muddy princeling who foolishly strolled into the front line in his gown of velvet and gold. It was on the first months of the revolution here in Revachel. Unrest was spreading like wildfire. Marauders had taken most of the Koran and were getting really ambitious. King Frisell thought he could end it all in one decisive strike. Sent his cousin, Drisson, to put an end to the unrest. Alas, the young Drisson was all piss and no vinegar, wearing a tunic of purple velvet and cockatoo feathers to battle. Even his rifle was gold-plated, shown from five clicks away. Can you imagine the asininity? He really despises that Drissant fellow. To keep the long and bloody story short, Drissant marched us against the partisans in Koran. And when I say march, I mean made us walk into captured enemy territory, single file, like toy soldiers, while he rode in front on his giant red stallion. The rebels were smart. They let us come real close before opening fire. Suffice to say, it was carnage. I got shot in the left shoulder, and went down. Just a flesh wound. But just as I turned over, the prince fell into the mud next to me. He was missing his lower jaw. Then his horse, driven mad by the noise and smell of gunpowder, stepped on my leg and shattered my knee. It's painful to even think about. I grabbed my sidearm and shot the beast in the head. Then everything went black. Capitaine Arno, le fléau des chevaux. The bane of horses. When I came to, it was all over. It was just me and Joel Estresson, gurgling in the blood-soaked mud right next to me. The Dink had taken numerous flesh wounds and lost a lot of blood. But despite missing his jaw, he seemed hesitant to die. Tougher than he looked, that one. Right, right. So I grabbed the prick and started crawling. Kept going until the 59th Cavalry picked us up. Through some miracle, we both survived. And the jealous freak convinced Frissel to give me a medal for not leaving him to die in his own blood. Peace and shit! He was the commanding officer and I was on duty. Just doing my job. Shouldn't hand out medals for that. Thirteen months later, I received the son for distinguished service. It's not worth mentioning. You sense he's downplaying it. He did a lot more than his duty. More than anyone's duty. It's in his spine, in his billowing breasts, an untarnished self-worth. Because he was a goddamn dandy! Had no business leading men or even being on the battlefield. All he was was related. That's it. Royal blood alone doesn't make army commanders. He was a stupid kid, only interested in horses, hairstyles, and man-loving. 
And 782 Royal Carabineers are dead because of his incompetence. Whoa, man loving. Is that even a word? It is not. The old Carabineer stands quietly like a statue, his features motionless. What Monseigneur Modesty is not telling you is that he crawled over seven kilometers before the cavalrymen found him and Brison. Two days later, that was. And that even while crawling with mongled half dead prince on his back, he still managed to murder three rebels on his way. Is that pride in his voice? It's deep down, but maybe even unbeknownst to the man himself. It's there. Sorry, officer, but you're reading me all wrong. I'm a man of peace, and these kinds of bloody heroics are only impressive to men like René himself. Certainly not to me. How did you find the story to be, officer? Maybe, maybe, but also bear in mind, officer. They don't end this out for anyone with a service recall. Oh no, you have to get shot, repeatedly. And you need to get your hands bloody too. Really, really bloody. Do not speak of what you know nothing about, Poltroon. Duty is something you will never understand. Bah! There were many such stories in those days. Many such men too. True Eversholians. Men with backbone. Oh, yes, René, yes. Men were bigger, girls were prettier, and everyone wore the fascia. Lord, please, bring those days back, if you can. I'm not getting into this with you again. <sighs> Officer, was there anything else? You should try to come up with a heroic story of your own. Impress this old soldier. Yes, King Philip III on his steed, a reminder of what Revachol once was. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king, someone who knows how to rule. Decisively, without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. A nation is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such madness to try to... Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. The Carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. Right.
tarpaulin cloak with possible RCM markings is still caught on the railing. As you leap in the air, a chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. Ankles tingling from the tension, blood roaring in your ears. You are ready for your rendezvous with the concrete pavement below. He's so on the money, Bratan! Just imagine yourself jewel-wielding a bottle and a flaming cigarette whilst airborne! As the concrete floor welcomes you, you realize it's been a while since you felt so alive. Alert, capable, must be the adrenaline. No one hears your shouts, but it makes you feel powerful inside. Now, with your feet firmly planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbor rushes back in. those empty wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone partied really, really hard here. Well, they went through six bottles of potent Pilsner, three bottles of Commodore Red, and almost four packs of cigarettes. It must have been pretty hard. Look at it. Of course it was you. You parted here. Yeah, we did, Bratan. And from the looks of it, we had a hell of a time. Hell of a time, Bratan. Oh, so advanced. Deep in the enemy territory, getting fucked up right under everyone's nose. High on life and adrenaline. And alcohol, apparently. I'm very proud of you. This is the night watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, René Arnaud. Listen, it's okay to take a few minutes to yourself. Sit down and have a breather. You need to rest. Your body is aching. Getting in here has taken something out of you. Have a seat. The chair is not as austere as the rest of the booth. A thin gray pillow is attached to the seat secured to the stiles by black ribbons. Stale air floods through your nostrils. Not a single mote of dust floats inside your lungs, though. The, in the drawers are empty, save for old timesheets and receipts. One small box, however, does hold some cheap painkillers. They are slightly out of date. You take the painkillers. They are yours now. Oh, boy. Where to start? Elevated risk of dementia, mini strokes, prophet's disease, sudden death, hair death, erectile malfunction, critical flatulence, watery blood, black mucus, uncontrollable weeping, increased sensitivity to la opera, inoperable joint disorder, total spinal collapse, don't think about that. Quick, think about something else.
The imagined dazzle of light overwhelms any list of potential side effects. Any negative thoughts are drowned out by the fantastic blast of disco. You stand and exit the booth. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Looks like the inhabitant is rather pedantic when it comes to order. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, René, is dressed in a royal carabiner uniform. The girl is young and very pretty. She is smiling playfully at the camera. René looks like he's about to smile. This photo must be tied to some good memories. is attached to its hook block. Marsh, on, Arret, off. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. quiet thunk, the crane places the container down. The harbor sleeps as the strike rages in the distance. The crane can rest again, now that its purpose has been fulfilled. Moving this container, of course. For this purpose it was built, for this purpose it has acted, and now it will rest. The crane does not return to its original position. It does not move at all. Before you stands a cargo container, just one of many in the yard. Before you stands a cargo container, just one of many in the yard. The container door appears unmoved by your attempt at flattery. The mundaneness of the situation does not seem to affect the container in the slightest. No reply. The knock produces a hollow ring of metal. Doesn't sound like there's anything inside the container. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Why are you even trying to open a door with rhetoric? Who understands anything you do?
Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubi Sunt on Moindi. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there, how can I help you, mister? The look in his deep blue eyes is as sincere as you've ever seen. Kind of makes you feel like an arsehole for no apparent reason. I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Oh yes, born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No sir, those are just nasty rumours. Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes I am, yes I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. The containers in the yard are green in Wild Pines livery, and the mountains rising behind Leo is all red in Union colors. It's like some red infection was spreading outwards from the container yard's core. There appear to be cisterns underneath the Union container covers. Yes, moving from inwards to outwards, by the looks of it, soon everything will be in Union colors. No, not really. Miss Erra doesn't tell me all the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. Oh, I don't know, mister. They say it's some chemicals. Most of them have labels on them, I think. Oh, no trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation. For a week or so. Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. Him and his boys stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling him to take some time off. I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. Well, that's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Too late. Leo's mouth is still moving and the words are spewing forth. Words, words, and look. Even more words. This guy could go on till the end of days. Now he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who... No, he already switched to a prized fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut in there with your questions. Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Leo. I'm like Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town, and Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is away. <laughs> Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> a real pretty lady with a skin like those Dewey Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down beside the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here, and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Oh, Lizzie, 
She is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. He respects that word. That's obvious. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. For a fraction of a second, there's sadness in his eyes. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Dr. Lemaitre said so. And she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. So Everard trained a lawyer named Miss Beefoot. Interesting. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. The white rectangle on your clothes might not mean an awful lot in Martinez, but the recognition from an authority figure made Leo's day. Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. Guys like Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made Martinez what it is today. Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Oh, Mr. Ever is usually in his office, of course. But you gotta be quick if you wanna see him. He leaves around 10 p.m. Bye bye now. not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Your fingers run over the dial pad. 005. That's the dialing code for Revachol. 4952 and a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers. Nine, nine, three. Calling, calling, still calling, then. Video Revachal, 24 hour video rental. We rent eight and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lamy, how may I help you? The voice of a youngster on the other end sounds as enthusiastic as that of a man walking towards the gallows. Video Revershall is a 24-hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lamy. No. Sir, I don't know. It's a video rental. Maybe you rent videos here. Maybe you call to extend your rental period. Do you need to extend your rental period? If you need any further assistance, you can visit us on the corner of Voyager Main. I can't help you over the phone. Are we done? He thinks you're pulling a prank on him. The call is terminated by the other party. You're left with the discomforting sound of the disconnect tone. <laughs> 